I think they mentioned me 297 times. They mentioned the border once. They mentioned crime twice. They don't mention the economy because the economy is horrible. Ah, uh, yes, President Trump this morning on Fox and Friends on the Fox News Channel. He called in to take a couple of questions, and 40 minutes later, 40 minutes later, he said he had to move on to the next thing. That's more media than uh, Kamala Harris has done, I think, for her, her entire vice presidency and, and her presidential candidacy. She has not taken questions for 40 minutes in her life. President Trump did that probably over breakfast. Might have been uh, having some, you know, some fresh fruit, some granola. While talking to Fox and Friends for 40 minutes. Uh, And it's true, they uh, spent a lot of time at the Democratic National Convention eating maggots. How many of them ate maggots? Did how many? Because the maggots on the menu at the hotel where a lot of the delegates are staying, and uh, you you barely notice them when you're eating. You know, said so that hotel buffet line and is that hey, there's uh, some gosh, these scrambled eggs have uh, they weren't fully scrambled. Uh, oh no, they're maggots. Ah, 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 ah. Uh, but uh, that's okay because uh, Democrats like to eat bugs. They like to eat bugs and stuff. They're fast, they're fast, they're Ernest T. Bass. Isn't that amazing? Uh, uh, uh. Who was the, uh, there was, when I lived in California, there was a car dealership in Los Angeles, Cal Worthington and Cal Worthington Fort. And uh, he said something like, if, uh, you know, uh, I can't uh, uh, make you a deal, I'll eat a bug. He said, uh, you know, I'll make you the best deal or I'll eat a bug. And it was a little joke back then. Now the Democrats are taking it mainstream, just like uh, Uganda and North Korea. Because the Democrats, this is progress. This is what they call progress. They're progressives, you know, don't you know? I, you know, I, uh, I've got to say, let's go to soundbite number one because we we played it uh, for you yesterday. But the uh, the Democrats, they they had the flag burning, the traditional Democrat Party uh, burning of the American flag, while uh, disguised as Black September terrorists that took over the. Olympic Village in Munich in 1972 to kill Jews. And uh, they were dressed like that outside of the Democratic National Convention day before yesterday with the ski masks and the black hoods and the and the gloves and completely covered up because there are cameras everywhere now. And, and they uh, set the American flag on fire and they set the Israeli flag on fire because Democrats love to burn stuff. When they say passing the torch, that's what they mean. We're passing the torch to the next generation of criminal, uh, you know, uh, National Socialist, Jew-hating style, uh, Black September, terrorist-loving, violent criminal mobs on the street, you know, and uh, that's passing the torch. And then they burn stuff. Invariably, they they burn a bunch of stuff. That's what they do. Amazing stuff. And then, of course, they turn because we know they're not patriotic. Although, yesterday, the Washington Post had a big piece, and I uh, shared a little bit of it with you yesterday. Washington Post had a piece that the Democrats had reclaimed the American flag. The Washington Post left out that then they set it on fire, then they burned it. And when they say reclaimed, I think what they mean was they stole it off of someone else's property, and then they burned it because... That's what the Democrats, that's how they reclaim the American flag. And then the Washington Post lies about it for them because they're bootlicks, not journalists at all. It's a tragic reality, uh, but a reality nonetheless. And then, of course, the, uh, the Democrats, they got busy at their big event doing the national anthem, the national anthem of the United States of America. Uh, the other day, we opened the program with the Soviet national anthem by the Soviet Army Men's Choir. Uh, because the Democrat Party is here, but they're not what they used to be, that's for sure. And they tried, they sent some people, I'll just call them people, up to the stage, I think they were genderless, to try to sing the national anthem, but it was clear they didn't know the words, they don't know the, the tune, they don't know the beat, they're, uh, they're not very musical people. Oh, say can you see All right, nice tone. Hey, it's eight-part harmony. Somebody else is jumping in a little late. 
I think this is like the the deaf ladies choir. So she had a pretty good little voice there. She just she must be in a different time zone or something because she, she just jumped in there. <laughs> Nothing. You're you're Democrats. That's uh, that's your Democrat party. Speaking of organized crime and the Democrat party, did you see the Nanny Pelosi thing yesterday? She was speaking at the uh, at the thing. And they were passing around buttons that people were pinning on themselves. And the, the buttons, the pins, they're uh, rectangular in shape. And they're the kind with the pin on the back you stick through your clothing and put on the little clasp on the back. And the, the, the image is of Nancy Pelosi's face. But what they've done is they have stolen, uh, perhaps in violation of copyright, uh, copyright laws could be a copyright infringement. The Godfather, you know, the Godfather, the great motion picture, the book, and the pin that the Democrats were wearing on the floor of the Democratic National Convention, the United Center in Chicago, Illinois, is black. It's rectangular, the shape of a book standing up. Nancy Pelosi's face in more or less white. She's white, isn't she? She's a uh, you know how white people run the Democrat Party and then they, they lie to black people. They've been doing it since at least the American Civil War, which they started so they could keep their slaves. But it has the, uh, the logo of the book and the movie The Godfather, and it says in the same kind of typeface, The Godmother, with the hand holding the, the wooden slats with the strings going down like the marionette puppet, you know, the... Because she's Vito Corleone. She's the Marlon Brando Vito Corleone, a.k.a. Vito Andolini, from the village of Corleone in Sicily. And there it is, the godmother, because she used her organized crime-like power to corrupt the undemocratic Democratic Party and the undemocratic Democratic process to kick Joe Biden out as president and replace her with, I guess, the only person they have because she's like the Fredo of the Corleone family, Kamala Harris. And the godmother, we should share this, I think, on uh, social media things, this photograph of the button with the godmother and the hand, the puppet master, the woman controlling the strings, the puppet strings. She's the godmother, and they're doing this proudly, like she's a gangster, a gangland leader, an organized crime family leader, which is effectively what the Democrat Party is, became an organized crime outfit long ago. And she, they're crediting her proudly. They're happy about this. She kicked the president of the United States out as the former Speaker of the House and replaced the president of the United States. Isn't that amazing? And uh, Nancy Pelosi very proudly took the stage last night as well. Um, And there are a couple of photographs on Al Gore's amazing Internet, peace be upon him. And we should be very thankful that Al Gore invented the Internet. Where would we be without Al Gore and his Internet? His amazing internet. Isn't that great? Yeah, so she's the godmother, like uh, Vito Corleone, and uh, the head of the organized crime family, and they're proud of it, and they made buttons up. She's got a little red rose on her lapel, like Vito Corleone, because it was, uh, you know, on this, the day of your daughter's wedding, right? And uh, But she's the godmother, and they're proud of it there in Chicago because the Democrats like to think of themselves as an organized crime outfit. And honestly, ask any of the people that crossed the Clinton family. Well, of course, it's going to be hard to ask a lot of them because a lot of them are, you know, they sleep with the fishes, don't they? And if you are, you know, Donald Trump, you know about the organized crime family, that's the Democrat Party, and they use all of their assets, the judges and the politicians that they carry in their pocket like so many nickels and dimes. And they, 
I haven't seen The Godfather in years. I actually talked about uh, putting it on last weekend, though, with my best girl. She said, yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Um, but I may put it on <laughs> put it on sometime soon. I haven't watched it in years. But it is, uh, you know, the, the, the godmother uh, is the godfather, the puppet master, the head of the organized crime family that forced out the most powerful man in the world. So she must really be the most powerful person in the world. And the Democrats are, are selling it. They're bragging about it. Nanny Pelosi was uh, at the convention yesterday, and she's <laughs> and she's you know she snorts and and uh, does that that weird thing with her lip and her nose and and <laughs> uh, but she was uh, there yesterday, and uh, in front of her, a sea of people, many of whom were wearing the Godmother pin, suggesting she's an organized crime figure, and they're all comfortable with that because. They know that power is there to be abused, right? And uh, she must share. She must share because there are other people in the room that also wish to wet their beak, wet their beak. Nanny Pelosi yesterday. The inauguration of Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, we established one of the most successful presidencies of modern times. That's a lie. I know that Vice President Harris is ready to take us to new heights. Yeah, the most, one of the most, uh, and she used weasel words. She's good at using weasel words. She's a politician to the to the core of her corrupt being. And yeah, one of the, the, the inauguration of Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, one of the most successful presidencies, administrations of modern times. So modern times is like, um, you know, uh, Donald Trump and Joe Biden. And Joe Biden had one of the most successful presidencies of the last two presidencies. That's not a very grandiose claim, I've got to say. It's a a really watered-down, petered-out claim to say that with the inauguration of Joe Biden established one of the most successful presidencies of modern times. Before that, eight years, of course, of Barack Hussein Obama, who hates America and everything in it. And his wife, Big Mike, she doesn't like us either. She was there a night before last, Big Mike. Boom, 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 boom. Her walking out on stage. Here comes Big Mike. Get out the way. Amazing stuff. And uh, this, uh, no sense of irony. I like to point out these people have no sense of irony. And Nanny Pelosi last night, no sense of irony, talking about all the jobs that he created when yesterday... The Bureau of Labor Statistics at the Department of Labor said, oh, yeah, by the way, did we mention that we had overestimated the number of jobs created by 809,000? Uh, you know, just call it a million. It's a, a, a rounding error in government talk. So, uh, yeah, we, uh, we've been lying to you about the number of jobs. And Joe Biden has claimed again and again that, that a, um, they, he's created 16 million jobs, right? And... Um, He's been fact-checked on that over and over again, and it's false. He's talking about the jobs that were suspended, told to stay at home, canceled because of the Wuhan Red Death out of the Wuhan Institute of Virology in Wuhan, China, uh, which who loves loves communist China? I tell you who loves communist China. Tim Walls, that's who loves communist China. And that's where the Wuhan Red Death came from. You think he had anything to do with it? He might have had something to do with it. Pretty amazing stuff. But uh, Nanny Pelosi lied about the number of jobs because that's what she does. Democrats deliver millions of jobs. So does Uber Eats. Stronger infrastructure and rural broadband. A a Biden child tax credit. Rescuing human pensions. Honoring our rescuing veterans, human all pensions to President Biden's patriotic vision of a fair America, doing so with liberty and justice for all. Thank oh. you, Joe. Liberty and jo- yeah, thank you, Joe. Uh, they love lying. They lie with such comfort and ease, don't they? Isn't that uh, just great? Yeah. So they uh, re- yesterday they revised downward the number of jobs created by eight hundred and eighteen thousand jobs. And she's out there bragging about jobs. He claims 16 million jobs. Uh, Even left-wing radical fake checkers have said, well, we're really just talking about people coming back to work after the shutdowns of Wuhan 
and the shutdowns were mostly inflicted by the left and Democrats. But never mind that. I'm telling you, you're Democrats. I got more Democrats lying uh, still coming up, too, because they were talking, and it was on television. So I can play it for you, for now at least. You know that the best-selling Eden Pure Thunderstorm air purifier uses Oxy technology, which helps to quickly destroy a whole lot of different viruses and odors and mold and and more floating around in the air. Thousands of five-star reviews right there online. It works like a champ. We've got two of them at home. They're great. And they're small, too. They're just they're not a big piece of furniture. You're going to hold one in your hand like this, just like that. Any smell will vanish. Just a few seconds with the thunderstorm being on. Odors from litter boxes, from cigarette smoke, from from diapers, and even left-wing protesters are no match for the Eden Pure thunderstorm. Even Michael Moore. The powerful thunderstorm sends out O3 molecules that seek out and help destroy odors. These molecules even go behind and underneath furniture. Nothing can hide from the thunderstorm. And you don't have to buy filters over and over again and replace them like you have to do with some air filters. So time to start enjoying fresh air in your home, in your office. Get several thunderstorms because right now you can save $200 American dollars on an Eden Pure Thunderstorm 3-pack for whole home protection. You're going to get three units for under $200. Put one in your basement, your teenager's room, your kitchen, any place you like to breathe clean, fresh air. All you have to do is go to EdenPureDeals.com. EdenPureDeals.com. Use the discount code CHRIS3, C-H-R-I-S, and the number 3, to save $200 because you hang out with me. That's EdenPureDeals.com. The discount code is chris 3 Yes, sir. Yeah, Pelosi. They lie. But she's the godmother. She's the head of uh, an organized crime syndicate. Huh? That's uh, the one truth. I'd love to have one of those buttons. That's a good piece of political memorabilia. If I were at the convention, I'd want to get one of those pins. Because that would be a good... They call it a keepsake from the Democratic convention. It's a, 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 a silent admission of what they are. And Nancy Pelosi last night jo- uh, bragging about all the jobs that Joe Biden has created, completely ignoring the fact that Joe Biden's own Labor Department and Bureau of Labor Statistics came out yesterday with news that they had overestimated job creation by 818,000 jobs. No big deal. They've got a long history at the Labor Department of uh, revising downward the number of jobs that they claim have been created. I'm beginning to think they lie a lot. Ah, yes, the uh, Democrat Party's organized crime family is the old uh, leave the gun, take the cannoli. you got to bring the cannoli home to the family. Nancy Pelosi made uh, made Joe Biden, of course, an offer that that he couldn't refuse. So many well known phrases from The Godfather, aren't they? You know, leave the gun, take the cannoli, uh, make him an offer he can't refuse. Fredo, you got Fredo. Now, I named, uh, I labeled uh, Chris Cuomo as Fredo, Fredo Cuomo, and uh, that really caught on. That was uh, I, I. Definitely started that many years ago. He, he might have been Fredo in high school, too, for all I know. But in the uh, public arena, I started calling him Fredo. And then we had a listener that called in, said he ran into Chris Cuomo at a like a backyard party with a couple of hundred people on, on Long Island, I think, in the Hampton, Hamptons. And he called him Fredo. And uh, Chris Cuomo got so rankled that he threatened him. He threatened violence. And, and he said, it's like calling me Fredo. It's like the N-word to my people, he said. It's like the N-word. My, no, uh, what, nitwit? Nincompoop? What a what a numbskull that guy is, the Fredo. Uh, speaking of Fredo, the, the Democrats, they have Tim Walls, the, the front page of the Washington Post, their lead story, a near-banner headline on the front page of the A-sectional of today's Washington Post. Walls makes his national introduction. No. No, that's not true. He was uh, introduced uh, some time ago now. 
That wasn't last night. That didn't happen. That uh, we we've been introduced. I know. I know a fake command sergeant major when I see one, a fake Iraq war vet, or was it an Afghanistan war vet, when in reality he was in Italy. Biggest fight that he faced was getting a good table at an Italian restaurant, getting the bottle of wine he wanted while in Italy. It's Italy. Hasn't been a war zone since Bob Dole left there, 1945. And, of course, they mocked and ridiculed Bob Dole, didn't they? had his arm injured, severely wounded by nausies. Nausies. Yeah, the Washington Post, Walls makes his national introduction uh, falsehood in the, in the headline. Always lead with a lie at the Washington Post. Governor hailed as coach, comma, veteran. Yeah, veteran of Italian restaurants. Bill Clinton, comma, Pelosi with her uh, godfather, godmother uh, thing going there. And Winfrey among speakers. Orca was there. Did you see Orca was there? She's, uh, Orca. I think I've, uh, I told you, I, she has, she's done very, very well in life. Very, very well indeed. And I've, I've never been a big Orca basher necessarily. She's an intelligent woman, a serious, she started as a TV reporter in Baltimore, didn't she? Uh, TV news reporter in Baltimore. And then she became Oprah Winfrey. It's uh, her parents named her Oprah, she says, because it's Harpo backwards, like Harpo Marx from the Marx Brothers, backward, which is peculiar to say the least. But uh, she's an intelligent person. She's, it's too bad she's a Democrat because she ought to be you know, smarter than that. But these billionaires, and she's a multi-billionaire, and congratulations go to her former Baltimore TV news reporter, great stuff. She owns an estate in Montecito, California. I used to live in Santa Barbara. In fact, I lived in Montecito for a period of time as well. My brother uh, Daniel and I rented the servants' quarters in a mansion there. Had good parking, good parking. <laughs> and uh, But uh, 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 Orca has a, an estate in Montecito. I have a friend that's in real estate in Montecito. She doesn't spend a lot of time there. She's almost never there. It's a large estate with fountains and rolling lawns and and things, a large property, a large home, uh, and uh, very, very expensive, tens of millions of dollars. And she doesn't go there much. But the water bill, and this was a couple of years ago. It's probably more now. The water bill for the estate that she doesn't go to is $50,000 a month. $50,000 a month. So was she up there complaining about rich people? Because they do a lot of that. You know how the Democrats do that. And then they introduced uh, J.B. Pritzker. J.B. Pritzker was there. The, he's inherited billions of dollars from his grandfather, started the Hyatt Hotel chain, right? And he spent uh, more than $300 million of his grandfather's money to buy the governor's mansion so he could say that he's governor. He also obviously bought a lot of fast food, lot, a lot of fast food. He, um, he's not a lean, mean fighting machine, that J.B. Pritzker. But he was in the skybox with Hillary Clinton last night and Chelsea Clinton. And Chelsea Clinton was not there with a date. She didn't appear to. Might have been the camera shot. But um, sitting there with J.B. Pritzker, he takes up a lot of the screen. Got to have one of those 70-millimeter lenses on your camera because J.B. Pritzker is on the left. And then Hillary... You know, and she's not twiggy either. And then uh, Chelsea Clinton, and she married a man. That must have upset her parents. Who's that? Who'd she marry? She married some guy. He was affiliated with another organized crime family, probably. Can't remember who she married. Mez- oh, that's right. She married uh, Mezvinsky. And Mezvinsky, uh, his. Father was a Democrat member of Congress from Pennsylvania. He went to prison for being a corrupt member of Congress. And his mother, also a member of Congress, who employed Jake Tapper as a Capitol Hill staffer because it's all a circle fest in a hot tub. Boy, is it a circle fest in a hot tub. The Washington Post, very excited to lie. Walls makes his national introduction. That's just not true. And they got these propaganda pieces on the front page. After harrowing first year as VP, a political reset 
to reset. Uh, what do you mean first year? She's been vice president for three and a half years. But they've got this ridiculous whitewash, Cleve R. Wootson Jr., typing on behalf of the Democrat Party in the pages of the Washington Post, owned by a cent of billionaire Jeff Bezos. You know, he bought a museum in Washington, D.C. This is a true story. And convert the textile museum off of Connecticut Avenue. He bought a museum, which was two, it had formerly been two mansions, very nice and very nice neighborhood. And uh, the owner of the Washington Post, Jeff Bezos, uh, he bought the museum, had it gutted, converted to his personal residence while Hillary Clinton was running for president because he wanted to be close to her when she was in the White House. And then she lost. A bunch of left-wingers showed up at his mansion, at his estate, at his uh, museum, and they brought a guillotine, and they did mock beheadings with watermelons and things in front of his house because they're mentally troubled and violent, and they have murder in their soul. And then they brought the guillotine down to the White House, and uh, Donald Trump was living there, and they did the guillotine of watermelons and cantaloupes and things down there because they have murder in their hearts. And the Washington Post, after harrowing first year as VP, a political reset, 15 months after her inauguration, Vice President Kamala Harris's chief of staff had resigned, part of a dispiriting drumbeat of staff departures. Something like 90% of her staff quit Uh, all saying the same thing, that she's a flippin' nightmare, a horror show. You don't want to be around her. You don't want to work for her. You know, Joe Biden verbally abuses the hell out of his staff, too, and curses him out behind closed doors and and uses every curse word in the book and um, just uh, disparages people. Uh, He's a mean, nasty person. And and here the Washington Post is cleaning it up. Cleve R. Wootson Jr. is doing a little mop-up on Isle Kamala, front page of the Washington Post, the drumbeat of staff departures. A stumbling television interview on immigration was routinely featured in Republican attacks. You mean they showed what she said? Aren't you guys supposed to do that? Uh, I thought you were supposed to be the news media, the fourth estate, a free and fair press, but they don't do that. Her often tentative public appearances were reminding Democrats, all too clearly, of her recent presidential campaign, which had collapsed before a single vote was cast. She still hasn't gotten a single vote, has she? Not just with her name. She uh, was not. Uh, she dropped out before the first primary in 2020, and uh, this time, nobody voted for her. Joe Biden was on the run. And the Democrats will say, oh, it was Joe Biden, Kamala Harris ticket that people voted for. Yeah. Nobody votes for the vice president in a primary. You ridiculous frauds and charlatans. I'm telling you, you people. You people. Uh, Also, the Washington Times has the headline today on the front page. Walls introduces himself as, quote, ordinary American. End quote. Harris's running mate aims to connect with working class. The working class. It's always about class warfare and race warfare. Ethnic warfare will do, uh, lacking race warfare. Amazing stuff. Yes, sir. So we got a little. Uh, we got a little of uh, Tim Walls, the uh, the guy who was not a command sergeant major, even though he likes to lay claim. And, uh, oh, by the way, you know, since that it was on their website, uh, and may still be on their website, that he retired as command sergeant major, which is false, and considered to be stolen honor, stolen valor, and, and he, uh, uh, they, they still have no policies listed on their campaign website, no policies whatsoever. You can sign up to donate money or to volunteer, um, and you can play Deutschland, Deutschland, Uber rallies, and the Soviet National Anthem on their website. I thought that was kind of weird. But, mm -mm -mm. yes, I'm telling you. I am telling you. Now, uh, a couple of things. Let's go go to this because this matters. This actually matters. The uh, parents of an American being held hostage, soundbite number 22. 22. 
just like on the roulette wheel in the movie Casablanca. 22, 22. And uh, Rachel Goldberg, Rachel Goldberg's son, has been held hostage by Hamas since last October 7th, last October 7th. And that's a bad thing. He also, when he was being kidnapped by them, he tried to escape and had, I think, his arm blown off. And they took him hostage by a grenade that they threw into a bomb shelter where he was, he had retreated to try to save his own life. And the savages, they threw a grenade in and they blew his arm off. I believe that's correct. And then they took him hostage. And they've been holding him now for 321 days. Uh, His parents last night were wearing just uh, numbers on their shirts, the number 320. And again, there's no Ted Koppel out there to do America Held Hostage Day 321, which is today. And Joe Biden and Kamala Harris could care less about Americans being held hostage by radical Islamic jihadis. But here is Rachel Goldberg speaking at the Democratic National Convention in Chicago. While anti-Israel savages were outside pro-terrorist savages who could care less about Americans being held hostage, Israeli forces just found the bodies of six murdered hostages in a tunnel that they raided the other day because they have more tunnels than the New York City subway system. But never mind that. Rachel Goldberg last night at the DNC, it was very uh, brief, uh, short-lived, and uh, or short-lived if you prefer. And uh, the news media could care less about the parents of an American hostage being held by Hamas for yesterday. It was 320 days. Among the hostages are eight American citizens. One of those Americans is our only son. And this is a uh, horrifying and extraordinary story. Uh, the, the Democrat Party could care less. That means the news media could care less. Uh, pretty amazing stuff, I've got to say. Their son, Hirsch Goldberg Poland, Hirsch Goldberg Poland, has uh, one parent Goldberg, one parent uh, Poland. And uh, he got uh, both last names. And then his mother, Rachel Goldberg, we just heard. The father, John Poland. In an inflamed Middle East, we know the one thing that can most immediately release pressure and bring calm to the entire region. A deal that brings this diverse group of 109 hostages home and ends the suffering of the innocent civilians in Gaza. Yeah, like, yeah, hey, where's my Nanny Pelosi godmother pin? Because I really want one of those buttons. Isn't that amazing? Now, while they were talking inside and they had a brief appearance on stage, outside, of course, the uh, pro-Hamas anti-Semite army that is the Democrat Party, they were having a sit-in, which is better than, you know, having a burn-in, which is what they usually have. And and they they blame Israel for the war. Let's change people's lives. Let's stop killing people in Gaza with our money and our bombs. It's that simple. This How about in about Israel? Money. Let's stop killing people in Israel. And, you know, the Democrat Party, Joe Biden and Barack Obama, they fund Iran, and Iran funds Hamas, and Hezbollah in Lebanon, and Hezbollah keeps firing rockets into Israel. Just uh, just amazing. Mm-mm-mm. And they, they're, they're pleading with Tim Walls, who was not a command sergeant major, like he's, oh, make the Jews stop it. Governor Walls, if you're hearing this, we all do better when we all do better, and that includes Palestinians. They are not bright people, not bright people. All right, have you heard Judy Driftwood? Judy Driftwood on the Panhandler Broadcasting System told a huge whopper of a lie about Donald Trump last night, live on television. She has not been suspended without pay or with pay. She's fine. PBS suckling on the taxpayer teat. You pay for it. I pay for it. We pay her salary. And last night she told a a humdinger of a lie 
as Kamala might say. I got I got a great gift in the mail um, yesterday. Well, at least I got it yesterday. I don't know when it got to the radio station, but I got it yesterday. And it's a uh, it's a magic eight ball, but there's more to it than that. And I want to I want to tell you the story of the magic eight ball uh, coming right up. But right now, let's go to Anne calling from Naperville, Illinois. Naperville, Illinois, on line six. Anne, you're on the Chris Plant show. Hi, Chris. Uh, you know, I watched Oprah for 25 years, and she never s- said a political word in 25 years. She was not political. Only when Obama came running for office did she support him. But the ironic part is everybody that ever lifted her up from her little town in Mississippi was a white man, a, a producer of a teeny radio station saw potential in her even when she was 300 pounds and then the next guy moved her up they were all wonderful white producers radio uh people who lifted her up after she'd been uh, abandoned by her mother attacked sexually assaulted by some cousins had to go live with her father it was always a white man who helped that woman up and for her to turn first of all on dr oz but for her to uh, support the one black candidate, not even knowing much about him, I thought was despicable. So of all the people who spoke last night, she irked me the most because the rest we know are Dems and you can, you know, there's no hope for them. But I always saw a little hope for her that she would step up and do the right thing, and she did not. And it's so disappointing. So she was my worst one last night. I didn't watch it, but, you know, you catch uh, clips on news shows and things. Sure. Uh, I would be watch it. But that broke my heart for her because I thought one day after she stabbed uh, Dr. Oz in the back that she, you know, she called him for every medical condition she's ever had. Mm. Well, I, uh, you know, Democrats, what are you going to do? And, uh, you know, and white men, they, uh, they got some issues there. You know, we're talking about taking away electricity. I mean it this time. 